Um, uh, I don't know. If it's not 69, they're doing it wrong. Let's be real. Ooh, okay. No, it's 69 out of the how many. It'll probably be like 100. So, over half. Almost, almost three quarters. <laughs> Oh, the mark of the beast. Do you think Wario is maybe safe? Uh, I was thinking more of just like two thirds exactly. Oh, okay. Two thirds. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I don't know. No offense to Wario, but I don't think he's cool enough to be Satan. Oh, shut your hole. Welcome, 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 everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to Hard Reset, a Cold North production. I'm your host, Patrick the Law Morris. Joining me this week, we have gorgeous Ben Reynolds. Meow. And the tenacious Tim Rackenai Miller. Oh, hi. Coming up on Hard Reset this week, we'll be discussing our thoughts on uh, on the biggest announcements of E3 2021. I know we're a little bit late, but I was sick last week, so please excuse us. Um, and then. Job. I know what a what a fucking Bitch. loser. Am I right? Man. Couldn't sit behind a camera or in front of. I don't oh, know. Oh, I was. It, it was a rough week last week. Um, what a and, jump! And then we what will also jump. be uh, discussing our thoughts on the show as a whole. But before we get to all that, I want to know what you guys have been playing this week. Tim, tell me what you've been playing this week. All right. So I finished Persona Five Strikers this week, which was pretty fun that was not like mario super strikers but with persona characters oh that would actually uh, be a really cool game yeah i'd probably still play that but uh no this is more like um the warriors games like dynasty warriors hyrule warriors yeah it's like a musou uh, game but with, yeah but with uh persona so that was pretty fun and uh i just picked up starlink again started playing that again today so battle for atlas yep and it another shot. Never, never finished it the first time. So, and you played that one on Switch, right? Because you have the Star Fox stuff, Correct. of course, absolutely. Nice. And uh, so, are you starting Starlink from the beginning? Yeah, starting fresh again because I loaded it up, played for five minutes. It's like I have no idea where I am or what I'm doing. <clears throat> I need the tutorial again. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, that game kind of had a funny like roll out as far as like when it came out everyone was like oh my god this game is not nearly worth it but then it got that reputation and so it hit the bargain bins pretty fast and then suddenly you could get like the whole nintendo switch like physical collection with the with the toys and everything for like 12 bucks and everyone was like oh yeah this is a great value i wish i had jumped on it at the time and everything but I'm yeah. still having fun with what I got currently. So yeah, no, we'll see what happens. That's cool. I would. Uh, I that game has definitely interested me in the past, but just the toys to life thing. I feel like if I got too into like that or amiibo, I have a little bit of problem with like collecting shit. So could could yep. take me down a pretty dark path. <clears throat> but yeah, it, it's been hard for me playing it today i actually like looked up how much the rest of the sets would be and i was just like no i cannot <laughs> afford to do that right now yeah how much are they at this point um well digitally on the eShop, almost everything is like the base price it originally was so Ooh. definitely don't go that route yeah um everything as far as like the actual toys um they're a little bit cheaper but not enough to fill the space that i have so if i Mm. was gonna do it i'd probably buy digitally right now just because i don't have space for 600 different toys to put together for a game i'm probably only gonna be playing for a week once i finish it yeah that makes sense all right well you'll definitely have to keep us updated on how how that one is because you're uh you are the star fox master so Mm -hmm. Keep us keep us up to date on kind of how it is because I heard that it was basically Star Fox in everything but name. I will let you know. All right, it's Star Fox plus Zelda in name. Oh, I don't know what that means, but okay, Starlink. Starlink. 
Oh, ah. gotcha. Ah. I, I, I get it. I like it. <laughs> All right. Ben, what have you been playing this week? I have been playing uh, Zell Fox now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. He plays a little a little uh, fox who's from the cloud or from this from space, and he's just on this fantasy adventure. <laughs> uh, uh, no, actually, I have yeah. been playing uh, mostly uh, Far Cry Primal. I've been okay. I've been dipping back into Far Cry Primal, which is honestly my favorite in the Far Cry series. I feel like guns make you too powerful in Far Cry, and so that's why I like Primal because it's just fun as fuck to just run around and kill people with spears. Nice, and that one got. Are you playing that on Xbox? Yeah, that one got FPS boost, didn't it? I'm pretty sure it did, but yeah. my screen doesn't necessarily no your screen does 60 which i'll tell you what there is a huge difference in those games between 30 and 60 i don't know it's been i played it on playstation 4 and then i actually mostly played it on my laptop at work on remote play oh really on saturdays (laughs) when we would just be really slow in the box office and so i'd just sit there playing uh Far Cry. <laughs> fucking Far Cry on my laptop. It was pretty cool back in the day when that game first came out. But yeah. And then otherwise, besides that, I've been playing a lot of MTG Arena. Just because... I I mean, maybe it's possible to get... But the, uh, like MTG Online just seems like it would be stupid expensive to get into as since I'm already playing with paper. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I've just been playing Arena because you can get cards for free there and uh it's okay it's kind of fun at times also super frustrating at other times it's so basically magic well like i mean the real the times where it's really frustrating is when you come up against somebody where you're like oh wow you clearly just spend all your money on this and probably have never even played with paper (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's like you you have a maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem. You're one of those whales that mobile developers are looking for. Exactly. <clears throat> Which I'm yeah, I, I feel like that game it could be very easy to do that to yourself, but yeah. Cuz it's like 30 bucks for the season pass in that game. I maybe you do you, you probably do get a fair amount of cards free and like cool border cards and stuff like that. But the How weird thing the about season? like a lot of the I'm not sure you're even, and the uh, the like other thing that's weird about the border, some of the border cards is like you don't you get the border card, but you can't play it unless you actually get the basic card. <laughs> it's, I'm like that's fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I, yeah, oh I don't God. know. It's uh, so I just looked. Sorry to interrupt. I just looked it up. A season is about a month. And it's thirty fucking bucks. Thirty dollars. That's absurd. That's, insane. that's, that's insane. a little disgusting. Yeah. That's so yeah. Ridiculous. I like. Yeah, I'd never do that. But it's just. It's like a fun way to just play magic in your spare time when and like. I I did buy a few like whatever the fucking jewel things are or whatever just so I yeah. could get some packs because I wanted because essentially you have to be able to like craft a certain amount of like commons and <clears throat> unco- or you get these things so you can craft specific cards you wanted want and like I wanted to play this really stupid janky deck called through uh, or th- called uh, uh, Dragon's Approach where you just it there's it's this stupid card that deals three damage to your opponent. And then uh, it, if you have four or more in your graveyard, you can you can exile five. Or no, you can exile four total when you play one. And then you can search your library for a, gra- a dragon and play it without paying its mana cost. And then so the idea is you just go in, grab a dragon with haste, and then swing right away because you have a, a pretty big creature with flying. It's pretty janky and pretty stupid, but it's pretty fun when you do win. <laughs> nice. Well, you know, yeah. every time you've talked to me about magic, I you've pushed me to download Arena, and I've always said, yeah, I might do that. I just downloaded it. I picked up my iPad while you were talking, and I downloaded it, so I'm going to give it a shot. Nice. It's pretty fun to play on an iPad. <clears throat> Plus, 
Maybe it'll get me ready so I won't totally embarrass myself when everyone comes and you and Chris <laughs> and Tim are giving us magic lessons. That's true. Yeah. Magic. <laughs> so, um, I, so, and, and you said you're playing Far Cry on Xbox. Did you pick that up when it was on sale? Yeah. Yeah. It was like six I've, bucks or something, right? I, yeah. And I played like the very, <clears throat> very beginning a while ago and then just like got distracted or something and walked away and then. I've just, like, on my days off, I've just been, when I want to play video games, I've just been playing that because it's yeah, pretty it's like, fun. I mean, they're good single-player games to go to as far as, like, oh, I don't have a single-player game that I'm really, like, dying for right now. I guess I'll go play this. Yeah. Uh, they did, didn't they just, like, give one of the um, Just Causes a boost for Xbox? Because those are also really good games for that. Uh, I don't know, but if they did, I would definitely check it out because like, you're right. Those are great games for like, they're not, they're not single player games that you're going to be super into, but they're single player games that will absolutely occupy time. Like, Oh, what happens if I attach this jet to this Jeep? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, like I, a few months ago, I went through a phase where I was like, I played through most of Far Cry four, but then I got stuck on one mission and then I played through a uh, not much. I would say maybe twenty percent of Far Cry Five, and uh, but like definitely good games to occupy your time for sure. Three's um, still the best, I think. <clears throat> three, uh, God, I don't. Know I mean, well, I honestly I think I like Primal the most, but then really I think for for a story. I think three is the best story. I will a hundred percent agree on that. Three is definitely my favorite one. The boss it's just really as a villain is just yeah. so amazing. Well, and like the, it's close. Yeah, like the shock of like it's just like a cool story where you're just like, oh yeah, I could see myself being on a vacation with my friends and like, oh fuck. Like, well, and that then, is like, like the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> and then the dehumanization because three actually got a lot of criticism for like. Oh yeah, this this frat bro just turns into like a you know like a super soldier blah blah blah, and it's like he's not like a super soldier, but he's kind of a gorilla. Like he does fall into that very quickly. But like a, he's super athletic, he really high in one mission, and B, it's like they do kind of tackle like the absolute inhumanity of Brody later on in the game, and I think that like I think I agree with you guys storytelling wise, three is definitely the best. Um Gameplay wise, I think I got to give it to five. I really, really liked five. But, uh, but have you even played fucking? I haven't played Primal. Yeah, dude, fight a fucking saber tooth tiger and tell me that five is the fucking <laughs> best. Okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, well, well you just say stick a saber tooth tiger on a person. <laughs> I mean, is it as cool as cheeseburger? Sicking cheeseburger on a, on a person? What's cheeseburger? Cheeseburger was the bear in uh, in Five? Far Cry Five. I do vaguely remember that. Uh, it's cooler than that. It's cooler than you that. can also get a bear. You can also get a bear in fucking Primal. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, maybe maybe I'll uh, grab Primal if it's still on sale. Um, I actually have quite the backlog going right now, though. I don't really have anything new to talk about, though, because I'm just still playing Mass Effect. I've been playing basically nothing but Mass Effect for almost two months, for like six weeks, and it's kind of just destroying me. But, but, so I don't really, I, I don't really have anything new to contribute to this portion of the show, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I don't know. I think I'll probably finish it in the next week or so. I, um yeah don't want to spoil anything but oh boy got to the end of morden's uh story arc the other night and oh it was rough <laughs> anyways um yeah so hopefully hopefully i'll have something new to contribute i don't know a couple weeks from now because i'll probably spend the rest of this week finishing uh finishing mass effect 3 and then i'm gonna play moff or then i'm gonna play ratchet and clank so 
Uh, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna skip over the news this week. We're just gonna jump straight into the topic of the show. <laughs> All right, topic of the show, E3 reactions. Oh, yeah, Ben, twist them. Uh, E3 reactions. So we're just going to go kind of show by show of the major shows. Um, The first few were barren enough that we can hit literally everything that was talked about. Uh, The last few, not so much. We're just going to have to kind of hit highlights, but that's okay. Um, So... What I want to do, what I was thinking what we could do is we'll we'll talk about the show, we'll talk about what was what was, you know, announced and discussed, and then we'll just give it a score out of 10. Um so let's start with Ubisoft Forward. And we'll we'll each give it a score out of 10. Uh let's start with Ubisoft Forward Rocksmith Plus. Um is like a computer version of Rocksmith to actually teach people how to play the guitar it's pretty cool yeah i might pick it up i've been thinking about learning guitar lately so that's cool see i like i think it's pretty cool it's pretty niche is i think is the biggest thing is like it's yeah you have to like actively want to point that video games are getting to now where they can be niche yeah that's true where they where they can be pretty niche and still come from a giant publisher and so yeah I mean Ben any thoughts on Rocksmith Plus seems kind of like a cool idea I'm I've, I'm sure that someone else has there, like some software already exists but maybe they'll make a better maybe well, they'll do a better job well and I mean Rocksmith has kind of been like they've been working on rocksmith for a while but it wasn't until because you know everyone it was back in the guitar hero days when everyone was like if you just spent as much time learning the real guitar as you do playing guitar hero and and my answer to that was like yes but i don't want to do that like (laughs) i would rather just play guitar hero and uh but but there were some people that that wanted to learn guitar and and I think Ubisoft was kind of on to that. And so Rocksmith has been around for a while. Uh, it kind of just seems like Rocksmith Plus is just taking it all up to the next level and, like, really, really effectively long-term teaching people how to play guitar and and kind of gamifying that to a degree. So, yeah, I mean, Tim, pick it up and let us know how it is. Yeah, we'll see. Take some we'll see. Ubisoft lessons. <laughs> Um, Riders Republic. Did either of you guys see the trailer for this one? Yeah, I think it's, it looks tight. This w- was... you say basically summer steep, but it's not because su- there's snowboarding too. Oh, I didn't see that. The trailer I yeah. saw. Maybe I was typing it's one. Mountain right. biking. Yeah, it just it's feels like X Games in, to me. Yeah, it's just like, it's a bunch of different. It's like steep, but with mountain biking kind of too. It looks like. Yeah, I mean, and like Steep was cool. I enjoyed Steep, and and this looks cool. I it I just wonder why they didn't call it Steep Two. Like Steep, uh, maybe, maybe. I Steep. I don't know how well Steep sold. It might have been to distance itself from it. Yeah, maybe um, maybe just resetting. Yeah, yeah, it could but be. um, I I honestly couldn't tell you. I thought Steep and it's made Game Pass Day One, right? Uh, I didn't catch that. That I mean, if it's Game Pass Day One, I'm on it. I'll play it for yeah, sure. Same. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that it is. Here, I'll I'm I'll like Google it. it. You guys tell tell me tell me you know how how you're feeling about Riders Republic while I figure this out. I mean, honestly, like like the I've been like I think the last time I was talking about how I'd been playing uh what's that fucking uh the procedurally generated mountain biking game um, oh um yeah 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 uh descenders descenders yeah i'd been playing that a bunch and like honestly that made me like when i first saw and then i saw riders republic i was like oh sick it's like you could do that 
but with fucking your friends like playing with you, which I guess you technically could in Descenders, but it doesn't. I don't feel like it would there. Which I guess there wasn't too much reason to s- ride with your friends, but it was kind of fun too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was kind of fun to just sort of hang out, right? It it was very much one of those mm-hmm. like let's just go hang out inside a video game, uh, kind of games. But I'm so I'm on the Xbox website and I'm not seeing anything, any mention of Game Pass for Riders Republic. Okay, I'm just- I must have been dreaming when I thought I saw Well, that. I mean, it's a good dream because I would have like that that would have that turns this game from uh from not play to yes, I will play that like the day it comes out. Um Yeah, that's kind of where I'm on it. Like I probably won't pay to play it. You know, I mean, what? if it comes to Game Pass, then yeah, I'll definitely pick it up. I had enough fun with Ben playing steep, like the two times we played that if it gets down to like 10 bucks, I'll probably buy it. We played steep more than two times. Eh, Yeah. I had enough fun playing steep that if it gets down to like 10 bucks, I'll buy Riders Republic. My only problem with steep, which is something I hope doesn't happen with this one is the game ran terribly. Oh yeah. On PC and most consoles. If yeah. you didn't have like a PS4 Pro or whatever, you were kind of screwed. I, I was going to say, I think I mostly so. played it on... Well, wait, we were playing it on PlayStation, weren't we? Yeah, I think we did. I don't feel like it ran that terribly. I I know my experience with it was not great. So. Uh, maybe... Because I remember I played it early on when it first came out. And like beta and then i know i think i decided not to buy it because i didn't feel like it ran very well and then maybe it improved yeah i because i remember when we played it that was like probably like three or four years ago yeah probably uh yeah i don't know i remember or maybe it was more recently than that actually i think it was like three years ago no i think it was actually more recent than that i think it was when i lived in this house even oh really but yeah but i'm not positive interesting well um so riders of public yeah we might play it uh assassin's creed valhalla is getting dlc into 2022 this is a first for assassin's creed i i mean it it's it's a longer tale than any assassin's creed game has had previously um and that's something i guess uh i like i don't know it's i'm i don't like assassin's creed but at the same time i appreciate that they're getting away from the annualized cycle they're they're definitely moving towards every other year for assassin's creed which i think is good because it allows them to make meteor experiences yeah, I absolutely agree with that, but I don't know. I, I feel like with how well Valhalla has been received and how well it's done, DLC was kind of inevitable for it. Yeah. Well, didn't they? They've so. already released some DLC, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And then they have uh, more DLC coming later this year. And then they said even DLC into early 2022. So, That's cool. Yeah. Um, Tim, did I... You used to play the old ones, right? Yeah, I played through... I guess 4 was the last one that I completed. <clears throat> I played a little bit of Unity and a little bit of... What was it? Blood, Not Bloodlines. I don't remember. It was the one that happened in England. I don't remember the name oh, of it. Oh, Syndicate. Syndicate, that one. Gotcha. I, play, um, I think the one... I played a little bit of Black Flag and the, and the one that was on Vita... And, and then, then and I then you picked up again. with the new ones. Yeah, I played Origins. Played... Or Origins. no, not Origin. Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey and Valhalla. That's and right. Origin. Interesting. Oh, I didn't know you played Valhalla. Yeah. Oh. I was I got that before? It... You guys got me that for my birthday. Did we? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I'm like ninety percent sure. 
Was it um so okay, so you played Valhalla. Are you are are you at all interested in going back to that game for DLC? I didn't beat it. I might go back. I've thought about going back to beat it maybe. But Gotcha. I don't know. I've just Yeah, maybe I will someday. All right. Um Watch Dogs Legion Bloodline DLC. Uh it's basically Watch Dogs Zombies. Big old not interested for me. I I yawned naturally, but I should have just <laughs> yawned ironically. You yawned naturally, <laughs> but you should have hammed it up a little bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tim? Yeah, I, just, I got no really interest in it. Watch yeah. Dogs. Is, I've tried it. It's worse GTA, and it's just like, eh, all right. Yeah. Worse GTA with, like, boring-ass it's... stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, like... God, every time I think a game can't get cringier, they make another Watch Dogs game and prove me wrong. Like, <laughs> they're just so focus-tested of, like, this is what kids think is cool. Yeah, and what the, was with... I guess that was the pig, where they got the pig mask thing that were all over it. Yeah, so that was... I mean, and and this has been... I, it started with Watch Dogs 2. It was just... It just feels like they got a bunch of kids in in a room, like kids that were like 13 to 25, I would say. And they were just like, tell us what you think is cool. And then they put literally everything in the game. They were like, Making hashtag. your cell phone make the fucking traffic lights change. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, it very much came came across like, you know, that kid that just fucking lied in middle school of like, yeah, I hacked it with my phone. And it's like, no, you fucking didn't. But they think that's cool. And they're in the focus group. And and it just seems like that's uh, that's just how Watch Dogs is made. So I think it's super cringy and corny and I just can't get over it. So I just I just steer clear of Watch Dogs altogether. Uh, just Dance 2022. Just Dance. Not uh, gonna dance for another year. <laughs> yeah, not gonna dance until Just Dance 2023. Then maybe I'll consider it. But uh, probably not. Far Cry 6. We've seen plenty of Far Cry 6 <laughs> at this point. I mean, I'm I'm in. Like, I've seen enough of it. I'm gonna buy it. It's It, it looks, looks cool. Yeah. It looks crazy enough to be Far Cry but like also brutal enough to be Far Cry. It looks like a Far Cry game and like I enjoy Far Cry, so it looks good enough to to be Far Cry. Tim? Yeah, it's going to be a no from me on this one actually. I never finished 5, didn't really enjoy it all that much, so going to stay my hand for a little while on it. All right, fair enough. Um and then Ben, you said looks cool. Are you going to Ben, are you going to buy it day 1 or no? Maybe. All right. We'll see. We'll see if I'm saving up for some magic cards or not. <laughs> You're basically <laughs> always saving up for magic cards, so that's a probably no. Um. Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction, formerly known as Rainbow Six Quarantine. I don't play Rainbow Six Siege, but I do like Rainbow Six. And I'll tell you, I don't like this because I don't think Rainbow Six needs to be supernatural. I mean, story-wise, yeah, all right, it's a little bit weird, but we're getting another Rainbow Six co-op experience that's not, like, exclusively an online shoot. Yeah, that's not exclusively, like, an online versus... I just just wish it wasn't Aliens. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice. Maybe throw in uh, Spanish Cartel or uh, let me go shoot Russians again or whatever have you. Yeah. But Ben, any thoughts on Rainbow Six? Maybe play it. Like, we'll see. I haven't actually watched the trailer for it, so. If it, if it comes to Game Pass, I'll try it. Um... But I just, 
I don't know. I don't know why they couldn't just make Rainbow Six Patriots. Like, Patriots looked like an awesome game. So, I, I'm, not, I'm not into the idea of Aliens in a Tom Clancy game, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, and then rounding out the Ubisoft uh, event was Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Pandora, or like it. Ah. What'd you say, Ben? I said, a.k.a. Gabe's favorite game of the presentation. Yeah, Gabe's favorite. No, I'm actually, I am with Gabe. I, it's it's like, I God, how did Avatar get so much? Like, eh. I have yeah, zero man. desire for another for an Avatar game. I have zero desire for another Avatar game or movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same. I mean, Zoe Saldana is hot, but... She, but I can see her in other movies. Yeah, she's. I can see even see her as an alien in other movies. Yeah, I can see more of her still as an alien, if that's my kink, in other movies. I can go watch Star Trek. Um, yeah, no. I'm, or fucking Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, literally two other franchises I would rather watch than Avatar. Oh, so, man. It's, ugh, I don't know. I'm, is to, is what I think of Avatar. And I'm not at all excited for uh, Frontiers of Pandora. Overall, Ubisoft Forward, you are getting like a three out of ten from me. So like a C? All right, I said we were going to grade him out of 10, but Ben's doing level <laughs> three. You have to stay consistent now, Ben. You've established right. this. Tim? Oh, wait, you, it was three out of 10? I thought it was three out of five. Sorry. No, 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 so I did three would... out of 10. That's oh, like a... That would be like a D. It's like a K. D <laughs> We've gone past F. J. That's like a, that's like almost, yeah, that's almost failing. Yeah, no, I, I didn't like it. Um, okay, so we're going F. All right, are you going an F? I would give it more of a D. A D, okay. Tim? Maybe a D plus. I don't, I don't, I'll give I don't it know a D plus. I don't know if I'd want to give Ubisoft the D, but yeah. Ugh, no. yeah. It was, not, it was not, a, not a great presentation. Not a great presentation, but it wasn't terrible. So it that's was not terrible. A D plus, I think. All right. It's all D, D plus. plus. All right, I'm, I'm sold. All right, fair enough. 3.5, <clears throat> D plus. We'll give them a 3.5. Uh, okay, so next up, Gearbox. Oh, shit. You know what? I got to bump up my score for Ubisoft up to like a four because Gearbox came next. So, uh, Gearbox, Godfall. Don't know if you guys were paying attention to that game, but uh, it was one of the major games that was like ad- used to advertise the PS5. Uh, and it was a PS5 exclusive. Turns out Godfall is coming to PS4 as well. Um, and it will have crossplay between PS4 and PS5. I did not give a shit about that game when I could play it on my PS5. I don't give a shit about that game playing it on PS4. Wait. What is it? Godfall. I don't it's know what that not is. familiar with it. I'll be real honest. Yeah. I mean, the only personal review that I've heard of it was Dom, and he said, yeah, you know, it's okay. Buy it when it's, like, $7. So that's not really a ringing endorsement in my mind. Not really. But Uh, in the game's defense, playing devil's advocate here, Dom is cheap. Dom is cheap, so you are correct about that. Dude still pirates games. So, fair enough. Um, then we had Tribes of Midgar. I watched the trailer for this, and I, I, I honestly... I not tell you what this game is about. I don't I know what not. this game is. <laughs> like, it just, maybe I'm dumb, but I, I had, I didn't have enough interest to, like, look it up and try and understand it. Uh, Homeworld 3 is in development. That's great. Tim, did you play Homeworld 2? Nope. 
God, Ben, maybe you did. That was back when you were playing PC. The name sounds familiar, but I don't think I played it. I want to say Homeworld 2 was like 2003. I remember discussion of it when I was in like junior high. It, it yeah, 2003. Um it got pretty good reviews, but like I don't know. There's there's basically like one RTS game I'm willing to kill for and it's not Homeworld. Uh and you're going to get that free fucking day in one. October, mm. baby. Yeah. Um, then we saw more of uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderworld. Um, both of you play more Borderlands than I do. How do you guys feel about Tiny Tina's? I'm a little excited for this because it seems to be more based off of the DLC from 2 or like a continuation of that. Um, frick, I'm, forget- I'm blanking on the name right now. Um, I actually need to look this up, but it was the best DLC for two, which in my opinion was the best Borderlands game. So a continuation of that, hopefully will make a decent Borderlands game, but yeah, the past few have kind of been misses in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. It feels like they've really identified that like Borderlands is kind of their big thing and it's and they're trying to like okay we got to really expand this world um width wise like this has to be like we have to cast a wider net with this thing because gearbox i don't know i i think that the existence of borderlands and the success of borderlands has kind of catapulted gearbox up to the point where you know where they they can have an E3 press conference, even though they really shouldn't, because it's basically just Borderlands. But that's just my thoughts on it. Um, I don't know. It it looks interesting. I'm not into Borderlands, so I'm not re- like I'm not really the right person to pass judgment on that. Ben, have you seen anything about Tiny Tina's? Mm-hmm. So. It, it's it's basically Borderlands in a fantasy setting because Tiny Tina from Borderlands has a D and D group, and you're playing their campaign. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, the first one was Assault on Dragon Keep. It was a DLC for two, which was a really fun DLC. <clears throat> yeah. I knew that was Dragon something. I couldn't remember the name of it, but. I'm excited to see where it goes. If I can get enough people to play with me, I probably will get it. If I have to go it solo, I'll probably be bowing out until it's cheap. That makes sense. The thing that always frustrates me with those games is that everybody talks through the story, so it's just like I... I have no idea what's going on. Care. It's Well, yeah, it's just like, okay, I don't care about what's going on. I guess we're just going to run and kill. Yeah. Well, and like finding the right and then I person to play with to play, play those games with is tough because you want to find someone who will like last time I tried to play, I was playing with Andrew and Zach and they were just playing so fast and like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just not learning the game. So I'm just sort of like following them around and like not able to do anything effectively. And I, it just wasn't fun and that sucked, but, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I do agree with you, Ben, that like, there are certain things that like the group can the group can really make that game like Tim was saying but also it can really really break that game it's all about finding the right group in my in my mind um and then they went straight into the Borderlands movie <sighs> big who cares i, I don't know they're making a movie but who's going to play claptrap Clap jack black um when is I it, mean is it in production? Yeah. If they're gonna do claptrap, they're probably just gonna get the voice actor for it because it's a little robot. They don't really need a person in it. It's like R two D two. No, it. it they the have already cast Jack Black. You gotta be kidding me. No. Um, 
<laughs> wow, fuck that. Let's right. see. Kate Blanchett is Lilith. Uh, Kevin Hart is Roland. Jack Black is Claptrap. Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay. They, they, <clears throat> these are some choices that are being made right now. Yeah, I, I mean... I God. All right. Sure. Um, Good job, Gearbox. You've already kind of fucked this up in my mind. Uh, okay. One saving grace. Eli Roth is directing. Who's Not enough to say. production I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, Did I, Eli Roth direct the Halloween that came out most recently that had Jamie Lee Curtis in it? Let's see. I'm on his IMDb page. I know this is riveting radio, but, like, meh. <laughs> uh, no, he did not. Okay. Oh, no, that's his producer credits. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Director. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Nope. Okay. He did not. Um, so yeah, I mean, I personally, I don't like it when they make movies, when they make games into movies and I don't like Borderlands. So this is just big. Who cares for me? Um, and that was pretty much it. Except for rampage. Rampage was sick. Uh, but that was, (laughs) that was it for gearbox. Three out of ten. Good. Yeah, about three out of ten. There was not much there. So they get a D minus to the D plus for... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) To to Ubisoft's D plus. It's fair enough. Because Ubisoft at least had some stuff that could be interesting, whereas this is just kind of a whole lot of... Yeah. A lot of it's not stuff that we as a group, us three, would play. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. so it's kind of a letdown. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. All right, now we're gonna have we're now we're gonna get to the meat and potatoes. Xbox and Bethesda. So this is where we're just gonna we we can only hit the highlights. Microsoft shows off so many games every single year. Can't talk about them all, so we're just gonna hit the highlights. They opened the show with Starfield. Did you guys watch that trailer? I did I not. Have not yet. I didn't get a chance to watch the show because I was at work. It's the trailer was done in engine and it looks good. I like, does it look like a Bethesda game? I would say it looks like a next gen Bethesda game. So yes, looks like, looks like a Bethesda game, but looks really pretty. Well, from what good, I've heard from people who have watched it, they are calling it No Man's Sky, but Bethesda. <clears throat> and I'm like, it's kind of interesting, but not I, really a whole lot to get on board with. I think that what seemed most interesting to me is that like sci-fi typically, um, Sci-fi typically just throws you into a, a pre-existing world in which, like, space travel and all that has already been basically mastered. Uh, whereas, like, this, it's, like, it's still very primitive. It's, it's, it's like, NASA shit that you're, that you're handling versus, like, you know, kind of cool. jumping to hyperspace. It, like, you're not doing that. And so, um, or at least it doesn't look like it. It, and so it's uh it looks like a very different take um so yeah i mean it's it looks interesting uh it's coming out on 11 11 22 which they really like november 11th is and it coming to game pass it is oh that's something i forgot to write down it's game pass day one and it is xbox exclusive all right might check it out because it's on game pass otherwise it was gonna be a pass for me yeah no i'll definitely play it because it's on game pass yeah same um but i don't know you guys should watch the trailer let me know what you guys think because it's it looks okay it looks interesting at the very least like i'm 
My interest is peaked. Um, right. Halo Infinite. So this is... So we saw... We didn't have E3 last year, but we did see Halo last year at Xbox's showcase. And then we saw Halo the year before that in 2019, and we saw Halo the year before that in 2018. Uh, so this is Halo Infinite's fourth E3, which is just so stupid. Um, but they they showed off the multiplayer finally. I, it looks good. It looks it looks like Halo Three, which I'm into because it looks like they're very much. It's it's gonna be more of a uh, arena style shooter. Did you guys watch anything I'm, on on Halo? I watched it's both the multiplayer enough. and single player trailers. Um, the multiplayer trailer looked good. Um, like you said, the arena aspect of it is nice. I really, really still do not like the grappling hook or any of its applications. Really, really, um, yeah. I it feels too much like Doom to me. It feels too much like they're trying to expand on something that's already had something successful. I know Doom doesn't have one. It just feels like that's more Doom appropriate. Uh, Doom did have one in Doom Eternal. Okay, see, I haven't played Eternal, but there you go. It yeah. just it just feels to fit that game more than it does Halo. I don't know. It just I don't like it. And yeah, I'm more into that Chinese movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that was that is just they just straight up that is Master Chief. Oh, like, that poster that was put out. Yeah, that was uh, that's a thing. Um, so Tim, what did you think of the, uh, the, the single player trailer? Um, I liked it. I like where the story is kind of going with it. Looks like they're trying to retcon and destroy what they did in five. Um, thank God. Yep. Because that was a mess. Um, I like new Cortana. I enjoy the look. It's, um, definitely something updated. Um, and it seems like her relationship with Chip with Chief is going to be a little bit of focus with it, which is fine. Um, but I guess it's going to be her growing into, I guess, her role. New Cortana. Be, yeah, which would be kind of interesting. Yeah. Ben, did you watch uh, any of that Halo stuff? No, but I would have ruined Halo 5 for myself if I did. Eh, it's okay. You can ruin Halo 5. It's ooh, not worth preserving, I should say. <laughs> Halo um, 5 is that game that I say play on easy, play at once, and just forget yeah, about get it. Get through it and move on with your life. Um, But, Ben, typically you haven't really been interested in Halo in general. So, this one is uh, going to be... Maybe... In reality, I haven't really... I, I actually was pretty into, like, Halo 1, 2, and 3, Reach, and ODST. Oh, okay. So you I just haven't liked 343 three Halo. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, this one... And I mean, it, now I can't play because the controls just feel broken to me. Gotcha. Well, this one, it, uh, it kind of seems like it's... I don't know. It seems like they are <clears throat> going back to the roots of Bungie Halo in all the best ways. And so I I, I think we should all pick it up and play it together. Oh, I'll absolutely be getting it. There's yeah. no, no doubt in my mind about that. Yeah. I mean, like, not only will I download the digital copy off Game Pass, but I will buy a physical copy of that game. But, box. but Ben, are are you down to like at least download it off Game Pass? Depends. I might be too busy playing Starfield. <laughs> well, that's something because they didn't commit to a release date for Halo. 
Yeah, because it's going to be in two more years. I mean, <laughs> so that's that's the obvious like thought. You know, I I don't want to like be all super negative, but like, are they are they certain that they can hit twenty twenty one? But then also, I read a theory that maybe they're just waiting because there's no date on Call of Duty yet, and they're just trying to stay out of Call of Duty's way. Yeah. That's very possible. I'm I, also wondering because they mentioned that the multiplayer is going to be free to play, <clears throat> that they don't release that first. Maybe they split them up. And, yeah, and then release the campaign at a later date. Oh, that would make me mad. Oh, I'd be pissed too, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised at this point. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll. I get... hope I'm wrong. Maybe we'll get Halo multiplayer in November and then single player next spring. I would be so pissed about that. Single player 2022 fall. (laughs) No, there's no way. Oh, God. Single player 2025 fall. Oh, God. (laughs) No. Um, 2552. That's what's going to come out. 2025 fall. The whole game. Okay, Ben, here's one that you're more interested in. Forza Horizon 5 got surprise announced. Fuck yes. Did you watch anything on that? Yeah, the fucking... It looks stupid good. It looks ridiculous. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. I was surprised. Incredibly surprised. Yeah. they That team, the, the Forza team at Playground, has the ability to, like... Like, they keep picking these places, and and I keep thinking, like, oh, yeah, that's such a beautiful place. And then they go and just make it so much more beautiful. And so, like, Forza Horizon 1 was France. Horizon 2 was Colorado. Horizon 3 was Australia. 4 was England. And 5 is Mexico. I Scotland. can't... Scotland! <clears throat> I, I, oh, was, I thought it was England. Edinburgh. I, I cannot wait for this game. This game looks so good. It looks absurd graphically. And like, I, the only thing that I wonder is like, they've already announced, so they had already announced Forza Motorsport. And they've already announced Fable. But somehow... Horizon 5 is coming before both of those games. It, it's, it's probably, I don't know, it's probably so easier. I don't know. Maybe. But didn't everybody expect Motorsport to be announced oh. and then it was Horizon 5 instead? Well, I mean, I'm yeah. okay with that. I mean, I was expecting Motorsport to get like kind of the same treatment that Horizon 5 did, which... Don't get me wrong, I'm totally fine with Horizon getting that spot because I prefer Horizon to Motorsport, but just wasn't what I was expecting. Um, but something to look forward to, uh, Fable is being made in the same engine as Horizon. So, like, as good as Horizon looks, that's how good Fable's going to look. And that's that going to be fucking be awesome. That's an interesting Weird prospect. If... They I still have the cartoonishness. Um, it might look kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know. I have total faith in Playground. I think that they're going to be. I think they are going to be a force to be reckoned with here in the next few years. So, I'm pretty excited about that. <clears throat> um, I think honestly, I think Horizon Five was probably my game of the show. So. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and then Redfall, Vampire Left for Dead, didn't really like it. A lot of people were pretty excited about this one, but like, I'd care more if Back for Blood wasn't coming out soon yeah. and being made by the people who actually made Left for Dead. Yeah, so. I, that was kind of what I was thinking too. Um, yeah, I didn't actually see this, so I'm not sure. I'll have to check it out but 
it's yeah, I'm you know, more excited for Back for Blood. Yeah, and it, it's Arcane, which like I loved Prey. So just make Prey too. Don't make Redfall. I don't know. Um, do you, I'm I'm glad to get that validation though that, that you guys feel that way as well. Or I guess Tim, you feel that way. Uh, Diablo two resurrected. Um, Ben, I don't know if you're into that, but Tim, I have no doubt that you'll be playing that one. Yeah, I'll probably be playing that one on PC. It will be. Uh, yeah, like if I don't, I've never played a Diablo game with a controller. Or, well, because, yeah, I only have ever played two back in the day. And, um, yeah, I don't know. If I, uh, I might try it with a controller. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's out on September 21st. So, and it looks pretty good. I'm not into that type of game, but it looks it looks like it's going to please the people that are into that type of game. Uh, Back mm-hmm. for Blood coming to Game Pass day one on October twelfth. Give it to me. I'm Gosh. I'm definitely hyped for Back for Blood. The, that game. Every time I see more of it, I get more excited for it. And I started very lukewarm. Um, ben, do you have any more thoughts on Back for Blood besides Give it to me? Mm, I mean, it just looks awesome. <coughs> I just that I. I hope that it's everything that everyone wanted from uh, the Left, Left 4 Dead, Dead franchise. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Tim? Yeah, I'm absolutely with Benton on this one. I love the Left 4 Dead games. When I first saw this, I was like, oh my god, is this the new Left 4 Dead? And then I was like, no, Back for Blood. And I'm like, all right, no, it's, it's legit just Left 4 Dead. So I'm, I'm all in, 100%. Yeah, so it's it's funny because um wasn't so Turtle Rock Studios who who's making Back for Blood? I don't know the name of their team. I just know that a lot of them were it's involved the, in the It's Turtle Rock. Yeah. So so Turtle Rock tried to do the whole like asymmetrical thing when they made about a year into the last generation when they made evolve and everyone was kind of expecting evolve to be basically left for dead three. Um, and, and it didn't turn out that way. Uh, I think that that's largely in the way that it was monetized, but like, I don't want to get hurt again, but I guess I'm willing to in the exact same way. Like I I'm willing to sign up for them to, to hurt me in the exact same way they hurt me last generation. I don't think they're going to hurt you this time. I really don't. This seems a lot more. It seems more put together. So yeah, it seems a yeah, a lot better produced, a lot more, like you said, put together. I think the direction is a lot more focused. I feel like the strength of Left 4 Dead, because I, I, we did play Evolve a little, and uh, I feel like the strength of Left 4 Dead was that the NPC zombies were still pretty hard to fight. <clears throat> yeah. Whereas, like, the the like little shit that you were dealing with in evolve Evolved it was, was just cannon not... fodder yeah for the most part and then until you fought the, the other actual... person the monster yeah, and then it was just like <clears throat> okay either we're gonna win or they are gonna win just basically like yeah it i mean it than... it didn't feel as much like you were progressing through something as like, like I don't know the the it just it didn't feel like because like the story of each of the like different like maps in Left for Dead was just kind of like distinct and cool and 
it doesn't it <clears throat> never felt evolve that never way. reached no, yeah. like evolve at its high point was lower than left for dead at its low point yep plum is being hilarious <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you, Ben. That's, that's a pretty good point. Uh, Outer Worlds got an, or Outer Worlds 2 got announced via a very self-aware trailer. Um, did you guys see this trailer? <clears throat> did not. Okay. So it was you funny. Outer Worlds. It's, uh, I didn't play Outer Worlds either. But I've heard uh, good things. I, I heard pretty good things. Not I've like the speed run. That's about 30 minutes, and that's about all I know of that game. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's uh, Obsidian, and they've done a pretty good job, especially in the past year, with making really good trailers. As far as, like, like Grounded. Remember, Grounded's trailer was really great. And this one was kind of from that same vein in the sense of, like, you know, the narrator is talking about, like, oh, they're going to show you a, a CGI trailer that's not at all gameplay. And... And like they have nothing, and they're they're just starting work, but they have a title, and then they reveal that it's Outer Worlds two, and like that's pretty funny. I mean, Obsidian is pretty good at making trailers. That being said, if that's how you're poking fun at yourself with a trailer, don't release that trailer. Like, it's too early to announce Outer Worlds two. Well, I mean, it could be that Microsoft wanted them to, and so they were just like. All right, fuck you, Microsoft. Here's our trailer. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. The... All right, this is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that very well could have happened. Uh, sea of Thieves, a pirate's life. So Jack Sparrow and um, Pirates That's of the Caribbean. Out now it's out now. I want to play it. I'm intrigued. Tim, I'll probably play a little bit of it, but it's not high on my to do list. It's, I feel like they need to start capitalizing and like integrating bigger, more recognizable stories like that into Sea of Thieves. Because at this point, Sea of Thieves looks, it plays so well, conceptually it's so good, but it just feels so generic in every way. They need to start doing stuff that creates some sense of individuality. And I think that this is definitely a step in the right direction for that. <clears throat> Bear. Boy. Uh, 12 minutes coming August 19th to game pass on day one. I am so hyped for 12 minutes. What about you guys? No idea. It's kind of like seven minutes in heaven. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not like seven minutes in heaven. It's a murder mystery where you play the same 12 minutes over and over and over again. Sounds repetitive. And but so the like same, loop, but a murder mystery instead kind okay. of so, so it's groundhog day all right cool um but it's the entire it's top down and the entire mystery takes place in an apartment and so like hey. and so like in the trailer it shows this guy and he like gets home and he's having dinner with his wife and then this guy shows up and like kills i think kills his wife and <clears throat> and then like Groundhog so Day happens. So then you happens. already know some of the 12 minutes. Well, right, but then Groundhog Day happens, and then he comes back in, and he's like, I, like we gotta, we gotta like get, get in the bedroom, a guy's coming, he's gonna kill you. And she's like, what? It looks really cool, I can't fucking wait for 12 minutes, it's gonna be so awesome. Interesting. I'll send you guys a trailer I, after this. Uh, Psychonauts 2... Intrigued. Coming August twenty fifth. Uh Game Pass Day like One. Not fans, but uh, it's gonna be a pass from me. I'm gonna play it. Yeah. I I think that I have hope that Psychonauts might become something bigger for Xbox, something more akin to like Microsoft's answer to Ratchet and Clank. Granted, there's a they've got a long way to go because Ratchet and Clank is so good, but like. I think they they might be able to do it. So, I hope it's received well. <clears throat> uh, Flight Simulator is coming to consoles on July 27th. Cool. I don't think I'll play this. Fly from Denver to Minneapolis. 
yeah, the, the next day. day. Before I actually do it. <laughs> Just, <laughs> that would be so pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I've played it on PC, but like I have a whole flight set up for that stuff. Playing it on a yeah. controller feels not yeah. great. I don't, like, I'd... Well, yeah, but what if you have a flight set up for your console? Then good on people who do. I don't know of any currently <laughs> that are available for the Series X. But mm. Does Andrew? Andrew has one for PS4 oh. for Elite Dangerous. Yeah. But that wouldn't help him for a flight sim. No. Um, <laughs> I... Xbox. You know, I thought that I was excited for this game, but I have a PC now, and I'm still not playing this game. So, I just don't think I'm going to play this. Uh, it looks really cool, but, meh. Age of Empires 4 is coming October 26th. Thank God I have a PC now, because, holy shit, I was going to be so upset about not being able to play Age of Empires. <clears throat> Tim, are you going to play never, that one? Probably not. I've never played an Age of Empires game, so. What? Yeah, I've never played Age of Empires. Oh my god. Not really even a huge Civilization fan either. Like, that style of game isn't my thing. Ah, dude, Age of Empires is so is sick. Entire, it's turn-based strategy. RTS is far cooler than turn-based strategy. Yeah. All right, uh, we're running running short on time. We've been going for a while, so we're going to burn through them here real quick. Uh, then Somerville looks pretty neat. It's uh, from one of the co-creators of Limbo and Inside, uh, coming to Game Pass in 2022. Um, and then Plague Tale Requiem, the sequel okay. I never knew I wanted, but now I am so hyped to play. Coming to Game Pass day one in 2022. Tim, you don't care. Ben, what about you? Maybe. Well, the game was fun, the first one. Yeah. I like that the game fell one. apart so hard in the second act. I have yeah. no faith. I have the, no faith in this. In, in the this finale, game. it it definitely fell apart. But okay, fair enough. Um then we mm-hmm. had uh Microsoft. I'm giving them a seven out of ten. So that's like a solid B. I uh, I mean yeah, solid B, we'll say. I'm giving them a B minus. B minus. No, I'll give them a B. Tim. A B. Yeah, six or seven. There's All a right. lot of good stuff there, but not. I think Plum gives a them lot a B for me. Well. All right. Well, we are uh, we're actually going to move straight into trivia because we're going to wrap up and get get the other three done. You don't want to talk about Avengers at a slightly quicker pace next or week. Guardians. Um, we're gonna we're gonna move at a slightly quicker pace next week. Wrap this up and then also talk about some news next week as well. But it's time for the weekly trivia challenge. Oh, no. don't know why, but the recording paused in the middle of Ben singing trivia. <clears throat> oh, no. Okay. This week's trivia question. Occasionally, Nintendo will contract a third party developer to make a game to make games in their major franchises. One of the best reviewed handheld Zelda games ever was developed by Capcom. Which game was that? Was it A, Link's Awakening, B, Breath of the Wild, C, The Minish Cap, or D, Twilight Princess? Ben, I'm going to have you go first because Tim seems pretty confident. You want to hear it again? Say one more time. Yeah. Say that. Okay. Uh, So I'm actually, one of the best reviewed handheld Zelda games ever was developed by Capcom. Was it Link's Awakening, Breath of the Wild, The Minish Cap, or Twilight Princess? Well, it was Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening, final answer? Mm-hmm. Tim? Same. Link's Awakening, final answer, Tim? 
Yep. Oh, you guys are both wrong. Link's Awakening was developed by Nintendo EAD. It was the Minish Cap. I was thinking that because I know that Capcom did Ages and Seasons. Yep. I couldn't remember if they did Link's Awakening, and I was like, and yeah, Link's Awakening like is so similar to Ages. Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't, the, no, they're see, pretty much like copy. Well, like, I, I basically was like, oh, I know it's one that I played, and I played Link's Awakening on Game Boy, and but I had actually played Ages, and I could not, not remember for the life of me who made Minish Cap, and so I was like, I don't think it was Capcom because that's like one of the ones I've not played very much. Oh man, it's so I good. Even I finished it. it, but it's like I've only played it once, so. It's a great it never Zelda left a game. huge impact on me. Well, um, that's that's all we've got for you guys tonight. If you liked what you heard, make sure to subscribe on whatever podcast platform you found us on. Also, leave us a rating and review. Uh, you can see everything we do all in one spot over at coldnorthpro.com. We'll be back next week finishing up our discussion on E3 and then also talking about some news. Until then, reset. <laughs>